Hi, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko. Put your phone down right now or get up from the computer and go get yourself a pen and a piece of paper because you need to take notes on this video. We're going to be talking about making ventilation holes in your plastic containers for geckos and isopods and there's going to be a ton of information in this video. So stay tuned. I want you to do me a favor right now. Go down and hit that like button. If by the end of the video, you don't get one tip out of this video on creating these ventilation holes in your enclosures, then feel free to unlike this video. As well, if there's a tip that you really enjoyed in this video, go ahead and make a comment below and let me know what that tip was. Over the years that I've been keeping geckos and isopods, I've created probably 500 tubs with ventilation holes in them. I know that number sounds crazy, but I went downstairs and counted this morning, and it's about 500 tubs. That's nuts. And I've done a lot of wrong things, and at this point, I feel like I'm doing some right things. So in this video, I'm going to share how I create ventilation holes in tubs for our geckos and isopods. But first of all, why do you need ventilation holes? Well, I, I think that might be obvious. You need ventilation holes to allow the air to come through the enclosure, whether it's for isopods or for geckos. Now, especially with isopods, some require more ventilation than others, and I'm not really going to get into that right now. As well, I'm really not going to get into the size of the hole required for isopods or for the geckos. You need to do the research, find out exactly what you need in your tubs, and cut the holes appropriately. And as well, Obviously, this is for plastic tubs. We breed a lot of animals. I use plastic tubs. If that's not your preference, that's great. But this is for the people that want to have more setups and want to learn how to best create those holes, both the cheapest way and the quickest way. to. And during this video, you're going to see at least five tips to save you money or save you time. So watch for those tips. Maybe there'll be more. Do you have your paper and pen? Well, let's get to it. Tip number one, I recently found these tubs online. This is a TB42 Iris tub, and I found them six for about 20 bucks. That's like $3.25 each. They're latchable, excellent, excellent tub. So that's tip number one. Go online, Amazon, TB42 Iris. I'm going to grab one of the tubs right now so you can see how big this is. Again, this is about a 12 quart TB42 and it's just, I think, the perfect size for a nice colony of isopods or a nice group of peri or a pair of Periodora, a small pack of Pachydactylus, or any other small geckos. But obviously, there's no ventilation whatsoever. Now you can put this on a rack for geckos and with that rack, you can leave enough space to give a little bit of ventilation. I've got some geckos that can escape. So I'm going to leave the tops on. I'm going to build a rack specifically for this size of an enclosure. And I'm going to put holes. I'm going to put ventilation holes in this tub. So let me go ahead and put the other tubs away. And we'll work with this one tub. There's really a lot of different steps to this process. We're going to talk about step number one and that's cutting the hole. That's assuming that you already have those tubs in house and you're ready to do the cutting. There's really a few different ways to do this. The first option is using a soldering iron. This is a cheap soldering iron. I think I've had it for probably 20 years and it's seen its wear. I've cut a lot of holes with this soldering iron. Here's one of the holes right now. You can see it's very uneven. It's hard to cut. There's a lot of fumes with this, so if you do use a soldering iron, open windows, do it outside. There's no debris that you get from cutting the hole with the soldering iron. I'm not a fan of this method at all. So in my opinion, this really isn't an option. It just takes way too much time. Option number two is you can cut holes in your tubs. This takes a little bit of work, but it's really not that bad. My suggestion with this method is make sure that you have another piece of plastic around so you can practice drilling a hole in that plastic. Plastic could break if you drill the incorrect way, the wrong speed, 
the wrong angle. So practice on another piece of plastic. When you're drilling, I like to use big drill bits. This is a half inch right here. You can find other bigger drill bits, but this will go through really super easy. Again, take your time so you don't break the plastic. For drilling, another option is hole bits. This is a half inch. This is an old, old drill bit. Super sharp, gets the job done very well. I find this even easier than the drill bit before to cut holes in the tub. Again, start it off slow and work your way through that hole. Like I said, this is a half inch. You can go up to one inch in size with these uh, holes. And again, this is if you need a smaller hole in your enclosure. Sometimes I like to put a line of these holes right at the top of the tub to, on either side to add ventilation. Let's talk about another drilling option. These are door handle drill bits, and this is absolutely my favorite method of creating uh, ventilation holes in these tubs. This is a two inch, this is a two and a half inch. And these are what we're going to use today to drill the holes. But let me show you one other method. If you're working with very, very small tubs, and those tubs have super thin tops, and you just want to cut a hole in the top, these razor knives are great for that. Anything other than the thinnest plastic, this is going to take you hours to do. So it's my least favorite method of cutting holes in plastic. Are you ready for tip number three? Let's talk about hole placement. When we talk about hole placement, it really depends on what you're keeping in these tubs. If it's ice pod specifically, what I'm going to do is cut holes in the top and in the side. And again, in the side, I might keep our cut smaller holes. When you cut on the side of the enclosure, for isopods, keep the holes higher so you can have plenty of substrate, plenty of area for them to climb on leaves and everything, and then the holes are a little bit higher away from the isopods. If you're cutting holes for geckos, here's my suggestion. I love a hole right in the front of the enclosure. Why is that? Well, these enclosures will go on a rack or a shelf and you can spray, you can mist right in that hole and get the whole enclosure wet. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple of holes. I'll turn the volume off. I have a plastic tub over here so I don't make a mess all over the place. And I'm going to cut a couple of holes in the top of the tub. Be back in just a second. Well, that was super easy. The only thing is that sometimes the top, the hole, the piece of plastic gets stuck in the drill bit. It takes a couple of wiggles to get it out. So we have our two holes in the top. Let me show you that. There's a lot of burrs on this uh, top. At this point, I'm going to cut a couple of holes in the sides. Okay, we're finished with our first tub. We have the three holes. Let me talk about placement again. Obviously, this is a tub designed for isopods. I'll place the substrate in this enclosure. The hole placement in this tub is very, very specific. I'm keeping them on this side so I can put the sphagnum moss over on this side, away from the holes, so that sphagnum moss or the wet side of the enclosure, moist side of the enclosure, stays more humid than the dry side. Now that we have those holes in the tubs, we're ready for screening or for vents, right? Not quite. Remember what I said earlier about the top? We still have those burrs on these holes. We have to take those off. If we don't take them off, hot gluing the screening on these uh, holes or putting in a vent just isn't going to work. So let's go ahead and do that. The best way that I found is with a sharp razor blade, a brand new razor blade, and just cut away from your fingers and be safe, but with a little bit of time, these burrs come right off. So I'm gonna take the burrs off and I'll be back in just a moment. The next step in the process is covering the holes. Well, I guess you could leave some of the holes uncovered. I've seen that before, but it's just not my preference. Even the top holes, I like to cover with something to keep gnats out, to keep the animals in. 
Obviously, if you have climbing geckos, you want to cover every single one of these holes. Even with terrestrial geckos, I just like to cover the holes. Maybe put something over them so nothing can get in and nothing can get out. There's a number of ways that you can cover the holes. Let me talk about one real quick here, and that's these vents. These vents are really super cool. This is a tub. I don't use this for isopods because it's a little bit lower. I use this tub for crested geckos. I bought a bunch of these uh, a couple of years ago. I put the holes in, I bought these vents, and I'm going to leave a link in the descriptions down below for a couple of companies that sell these, and you can check them out when you have time. These vents are super easy to use, by the right size, of course. They fit in the holes, they pop in, and they have these tabs that you can just move up, and that keeps the vents in the holes. Very nice to work with these. Now, I don't like to work with these for isopods, but they work great for geckos. And again, if you're keeping a gecko in here, especially a small baby crested gecko, you can mist in the hole without, having, without needing to take off the top at all. Let's talk about the material that you'll be using to cover these holes. This is a venting material, a plastic material. You can buy wire. I don't think that you need to use wire for these holes, but this is a plastic material. These are used for uh, screen doors. It comes in bigger rolls like this. This is a roll of 48 inches by 25 feet. I think it was like 10 or $12. This will make a lot of holes. Great option. Another option is cheesecloth. And I've used this in the past. You can buy this fairly reasonably, but it's a real fine material. I really like using this. Another material, and here's another tip for you. If you get mealworms in the mail, they come in these snake bags. If you work with snakes, you know what this is. This is just a bag, a material, a fine material that the, mater the mealworms or the snakes come in. You can cut this up and this works perfectly for these holes. My favorite material is chiffon, and you can find chiffon at any of the uh, clothing stores, fabric stores. Unfortunately, I went downstairs to get some to do these holes, and this was the only piece that I had left. So today we're going to use another material to do these holes. I'm going to go ahead and break out the cheesecloth for the purpose of this video. I'm going to unroll a little bit, separate it out, and again, this is a really super fine material. I'm just going to cut a few uh, holes here, a few pieces. If I were to do a lot of tubs, I would cut this into a longer length and cut up a bunch of these uh, squares before I even started gluing any of them in. But for this video, I'm just going to cut five. So I get about the size of this hole and I start my cut, try to keep, a bit, keep it as square as possible. I think what I'm going to do in the future is get one of those measuring boards that they use again in fabric stores. And what that would allow me to do is put it down on the board, take a razor knife, measure out the square that I want, put it on the measuring board, take a razor knife and cut it into the appropriate size squares. As I'm pretty clumsy with these scissors and with these holes, this is just gonna have to get the job done for now. And there's our first piece of material for one of these holes. and we're ready for the next step. Okay, I think we're really close here. For this step, you'll need a hot glue gun and hot glue sticks. And here's a tip for you. You're gonna be doing a lot of holes. You might even have some of these holes come off after a few years or uh, bend in. What you wanna do is buy these hot glue sticks in bulk. Get the very, very large ones. It'll save you a ton of money. So we're ready to go ahead and start gluing. I like to put the uh, material on the inside of the tub just to keep everything away from the top on the outside because occasionally on the outside I might knock the uh, enclosure a little bit and I don't want those uh, the material to be come in contact with that. So let's go ahead and start uh, gluing. And I flipped it over. I'm gluing on again on the inside. And let me start with a, a quick bead. I love working with these hot glue guns. They're so easy, but they are time consuming. So 
Again, take your time. This is very hot. Be safe. I'm going to go ahead and just start applying that first bead of glue. And what I'm going to do is work all the way around the edge of this material. I'll go ahead and do that for this first one, and then I'll show you the results in just a moment. Be right back. I finished covering the first two, the top two holes, and I'll do the sides in just a moment, but I wanted to get you a close-up of these holes and how they're covered and the, how we did the hot glue so you can take a look at exactly what it looks like. I'll finish the sides in just a moment, but I wanted to talk through this whole process just real quickly one more time in the time that it actually took me to do this. So the very first step, obviously, is cutting the holes and for cutting the five holes, I probably spent about one minute on that. The next was uh, deburring the sides. That was a little bit longer, and with that uh, razor blade, deburring the five holes probably took me, I would say, two or three minutes. The next step was to measure out the material and cut that. And for the five holes, again, that was probably another minute or so. It really didn't take that much time. And then finally, Doing the hot glue, and this is the longest step, putting the, the two holes here, probably took me another, I would say, two minutes per hole. So if I have five holes, that's another 10 minutes. So that's, the again, the longest process in this whole thing. And I know if my wife were doing this, she'd probably speed this whole process up by half. If you really want to speed up this process, instead of doing the material for the holes, do vents. But let me warn you, if you do vents, you have the possibility of having animals come into the enclosure, like fruit flies or gnats, but also you have the possibility of animals, like your isopod babies, getting out of those vents. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from the video. If you did, keep that like checked off there. If you didn't, uncheck that like. Leave me a comment below on a tip that you learned, or if you have a better way of doing this, please leave a comment below. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the notification all. That's very important so that you don't miss another video. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.